Magnus had a surprisingly good time fighting the Sentinels. Once he figured out how the rune worked, it was like having an ancient boss checklist. He traveled to the various different biomes and was victorious against each new Sentinel. Amid the excitement of this boss scavenger hunt, Magnus started to feel that he was being watched by a powerful, malevolent force from the dungeon. At first, he thought it would be best not to disturb this entity, but after defeating the Sentinels, Magnus got a bit restless and needed something interesting to do. It was time to go back to the dungeon and learn what had been suspiciously watching him, and if need be, destroy it. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage Calamity Let's Play. We are doing a death mode playthrough using only magic weapons. Last episode, we defeated the Sentinels of the Devourer, and I've been doing some farming in between episodes, so we are ready to start fighting the Poltergast. Before we do that, though, I wanted to craft a couple things. The first thing is the Elderberry, which requires Life Fruit, Eulabloom, Luminite, and Unholy Essence, and that will increase our maximum life. So let's go ahead and try that. And you see it bumps us up to 800 and turns our life to be a light blue. The next thing we can craft is the summon for the Poltergast. And it just requires 100 Phantoplasm. And so let's craft one of those. And we can also craft Supreme Mana Potions. And those restore 400 mana. They just are a combination of Super Mana Potions and Phantoplasm. And we've got a whole bunch of Super Mana Potions. So let's craft a few of these. Maybe just a hundred for now. The next thing we can craft are bloodstone cores. Those just require bloodstone, blood orbs, and phantoplasm. And you can get bloodstone from a ton of different bosses, so I farmed some of that up. The brimstone elemental gives bloodstone. You can get it from the Ravager and the Calamitous boss. And there's some enemies that also drop it as well. So let's craft a whole bunch of this. That's probably good. And we can't craft the Bloodstone Armor until we've defeated the Poltergast, but there are two magic weapons. The Sanguine Flare we can do, and the Viscera. Those kind of sound gross. This one seems to just shoot blood orbs. Oh, this is a Life Drain. Very nice. And then the Viscera says it fires a Blood Beam that heals you on enemy hits. Ooh, this is really cool. Let's give these a try really quickly against an approved dummy and just see. Ooh, 24,000 damage. That is very nice. And this one does 20,000. Well, now it's time to head on into the dungeon and let's get this fight started. I'm really excited for this boss fight because I really enjoy fighting Plantera. So I think this is going to be quite fun. And I think this is going to be the spell I want to kind of focus on because it homes so well. I think it'll do quite well against the Poltergast. Grab some of those mana regeneration stars. And we just got to make sure we dodge all of these little tiny projectiles. Okay, regen the mana. Ooh, we already got adrenaline going. Well, we definitely don't need any health regen just yet. Oh, although they are getting a little bit more aggressive. And yeah, I think we're doing pretty well. I haven't had to use a healing potion either. They kind of get close to you and then just kind of stop. It's a bit odd. Like, they could dash into me, but they don't really do it. Although that one just did. <laughs> I jinxed myself. Man, this spell is so good. Oops, taking some hits here. Not good. And 
I think we're going pretty good on this fight. Got some adrenaline again, although we're kind of out of magic, unfortunately. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we are pretty powered up for these fights right now. And that went really well. So let's grab a let's grab a loot magnet and just make sure we got everything. So the lore piece for the Poltergast says place in your inventory to gain an increased item grab range. That's pretty awesome. No downside to that one. I may keep that for a little bit. And let's see what we got from the treasure bag. Ooh, we got the affliction. That's a good accessory. And then we have this magic weapon. Oh, is this like the fungus rod? And then, oh, I love this blade, terror blade. And then the Damon's flame bow. Oh, these are such good weapons. And then we have a consumable that permanently makes adrenaline mode take five less seconds to charge. So let's do that. That will be really good. Now we have Ruinous Souls. Let's actually run back to base, maybe craft a couple upgrades, and then maybe we'll farm him up one more time. I've got a few of the items that we need to upgrade right here. So we've got the Inferno Fork, which can upgrade with two Ruinous Souls and Twisting Nether into the Venusian Trident. We can combine the Spectre Staff with Ruinous Souls and Dark Plasma, and that will create the Phantasmal Fury. Let's do that. Man, we're getting so many cool weapons already. And then we can do an upgrade to the Shadow Beam Staff, which is just a vanilla item. And that just required the Armored Shell, Ruinous Souls, and Shadow Beam. The next is the upgrade to the Last Prism. It's called the Dark Spark. And we need 10 Dark Plasma, 20 Ruinous Souls, and 30 Divine Geodes. And I think we don't have enough Divine Geodes or Ruinous Souls. So we may need to wait a little bit to craft that one. We can go farm up the boss again. And then this is what we really need to get. I keep forgetting my magic upgrades, but not today. We're going to craft the Phantom Heart. And what that will do is increase max mana by 50. And so our mana should go up to 550. And there it goes. And that's the final mana upgrade. Ooh, what's this one? There's an upgrade to the Nebula Arcanum. I don't know if we've got enough Ruinous Souls left. We only have two. Now we've got some pretty awesome looking weapons here. I really like these and I'm excited to go try them out on the Poltergast. So let's head right back to the dungeon and get a few more Ruinous Souls. Ooh, these spells feel pretty good. Oh man, I'm excited. So right now I'm using the Phantasmal Fury. And it seems to be doing pretty good work here. Let's try the Shadow Bolt Staff. Ooh, this is very much like the Elemental Ray. Ooh, this one's pretty sweet. Shoots just a huge fireball. It's called the Venusian Trident or something. I like that one a lot. And here we go with the f modified fungus staff, which was my favorite weapon in pre-hard mode. And this one seems to be doing pretty good. Summons homing little fireballs. They're kind of like candle fire. I like this one a lot. But I think the most powerful was the Phantasmal Fury. Well, we just did Rage and Adrenaline and did a ton of damage there. There we go. More Ruinous Souls. Perfect. And we got the Banshee Hook. That's pretty awesome. And the Ghastly Visage. Whoa. Now that's pretty sweet. 
that's just like like the nebula spell and it really homes in i'm glad we did that again oh and we have the poultry gas mask yeah that looks pretty sweet poultry gas mask kind of looks like a scuba helmet okay it's a little pricey but let's just buy one and see what we get mainly we're going for those ruinous souls we don't really need the other stuff now that we have a bunch more ruinous souls Let's go ahead and craft the upgraded stratosphere. And there we go, stratosphere. <laughs> that looks so cool. I love it. We can craft our blood flare armor, which just requires bloodstone cores and ruinous souls. So let's get that crafted. And here's the magic damage helmet. So let's see the difference between Blood Flare and Terragon. We'll probably lose some defense because our Terragon wing buff will disappear. But right now we've got 164 defense. And now we have 156. And our damage went from 723 to 741. The set bonus says it greatly increases life regen and that enemies below 50% life will drop hearts when struck and enemies above 50% life have a chance to drop mana stars. Enemies killed during a blood moon have a higher chance to drop blood orbs. Magic weapons will sometimes fire ghostly bolts. Magic critical strikes cause flame explosions every two seconds. And that means we can switch our wings back to our tracers. I think we need to find a hollowed biome, which is right over here. And we need to fight Providence. That should be a pretty simple fight, but I don't want to underestimate Providence in death mode. And let's do this. Okay, we're doing a ton more damage, but our arena is non-existent. Okay, let's try using some homing stuff. Ooh, taking some damage here. Okay, let's switch to some self-heal. And maybe let's just stick with some self heal for a while here. Because we're taking way too much damage. Okay, now that Providence is below 50% health, we're going to be getting hearts dropping. So they should be right under wherever she stands for a little bit. Our blood flare armor is really helping out. Let's take down the Guardians. Oh, they should drop stars because they're above 50% health. Yep, there's a star right there. The self-heal, man. Oh, we're too far away. There's a really powerful debuff that Providence has. If you get too far away from her, and a few people pointed that out that the last episode I had been Having that debuff hit me pretty bad. Well, it was episode 23. This weapon is so powerful. And let's switch back to some other stuff. Try some different weapons here. That was definitely not ideal, the way we fought that. But I didn't really want to do an arena. And it was kind of more fun to just have it be impromptu. And let's see what we got. The main thing are the Elysian wings. And now that we have our divine geodes, we can actually craft the dark spark. So let's do that and let's see what it does. Oh yeah, this one is awesome. And the last thing that we need to craft is the Wyvern's Call upgrade. And that just requires five Ruinous Souls. And we only have four. <laughs> so I may farm up the Poltergast one more time, but I kind of want to go to the Abyss first. Uh-oh, we have the Acid Rain event. I think the old Duke is going to be a bit too strong for us currently. Ooh, do we have the Kragma Mire? Nice. Let's 
kill this, because we didn't kill it last time we did this event. Oh, it pulled us in? That's awesome. Although it's not very fun, we're getting hurt. Wow, it was like chewing on us. Wasn't very nice. Maybe let's try the dark spark. Here we go. Ha ha ha. Take that, enemies. We're actually able to keep this going for a while because of all the little stars we're picking up. This is good. Yeah, I like this spell a lot. Ooh, we got a nuclear terror. Excellent. Uh, let's try a different spell, maybe. Oh, that spell doesn't go through water. That makes sense, it's a fire spell. Man, these nuclear terrors are pretty strong. Luckily their attacks are pretty simple to dodge. The old duke has spawned. And time to get destroyed. <laughs> oh man. I'm so scared about this boss. Okay, let's try different spells, maybe. Oh, this song is so epic, though. Okay, we can at least try using Rage. See how much damage we can do. Oh my gosh, those dashes. Oh, am I, like, not allowed to fly there? For some reason, it was, like, glitching me. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was doing during that fight. We probably need to build a proper arena. And also, fighting in the rain is surprisingly distracting because you can't really see a lot of the projectiles at night in the rain. So we got some lead cores, we got a bunch of stuff for other classes, we got this summon. I'll just go ahead and use our fairy merchant so we can just sell some of this stuff. Okay, now we are back geared up to go into the abyss. And we're sinking so fast, pretty sweet. So for the most part, we're just going down deep enough to start fighting some of the hard mobs. So we're going to try to take out some adult Edelin worms because I think those drop some magic weapon or something. So we're going to have to check that out. Okay, I think this is the deeper layer. We've got an eel coming at us. Maybe the dark spark will be good against the eel. There we go. Yes. Oh, a reaper shark. I don't know if it's, I can hardly see the health bar. I think we might have killed it. Oh no, we didn't. We didn't kill it, we didn't kill it. It's got so much health, oh my gosh. We have to like bring it all the way out of the abyss practically. Okay, at least now we can see it. Let's go with this beam, this should do better damage. There we go. And what we need is those Reaper Tooths. Perfect. Oh yeah, this weapon is so much better. This is probably our best weapon right now. Ooh, we just got the Valdiction. I did a showcase on that, that's an amazing weapon. 
that makes the Devourer of God so easy if we had a rogue class. This is definitely by far the deepest we have gone in the Abyss. And it's pretty sweet. Finding some new stuff. Ooh, lots of ore. Grab that. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the Abyss. I think there's a treasure chest at the very bottom. Here it is. Oh, crud. We got the Edelin Worm. And this time we gotta really kill it because I think this is the main thing we need to fight. And it looks like we're gonna be able to kill it. Excellent. Ooh, and we got the magic weapon, I think. That's perfect. The Idolic Whale or the Idolic Idolic Whale. Not 100% sure how to pronounce that. We also got the Soul Edge. I love that sword. Maybe let's kill one or two more of these mobs and see what we can get. Ooh, it's like teleporting me. And nothing from that one. I do want to get this treasure though. And we got the terminus. That's pretty fun, although we are not anywhere close to being able to use the terminus. And another reaper shark, that's always good. Man, this weapon absolutely shreds these mobs down here. We're gonna need to leave though in just a sec. The next thing I want to do is craft the Reaper Tooth Necklace. The Reaper Tooth Necklace is so amazing, it increases the armor penetration by 100, increases all damage by 25%. The problem is it cuts your defense and damage reduction in half. That could be a bit rough, but on this next boss we may want to optimize towards damage. The other thing I want to do is upgrade the Wyvern's Call to the Clamor Noctus. I think that's the last weapon we can craft before fighting this next boss. That's pretty sweet. I don't know if it's my type of spell. I'll give it a try, but I usually like spells to be um, directly from the character like this. It's easier for me to aim. I think this is a good place to end the episode. We have a whole bunch of new weapons. We've got new armor. We've got new accessories. It's just so much new stuff after defeating the Poltergast, and I think we're about as powered up as we can get before we fight the next boss, which is the Devourer of Gods. So I'm pretty darn excited for the fight, but I think it's going to be quite difficult. So definitely stay tuned for the challenging attempts at defeating the Devourer of Gods on death mode. And if you're enjoying these videos and the series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.